Hello wonderful people and glad you could join me on today's journey or last week's journey actually I've been having some issues trying to get film done uh, I've been working on new mounts for cameras on the bike uh, which I hope this one will give a little bit better footage um, here we are just heading off to Biggin Hill this is one of the short rides I like doing um, takes me about an hour to get round it it's got some great lanes um, got a little bit of climbing in it but it's not a particularly monstrous one unless you're coming back up this hill here um, we're on Hawes Lane now which is in West Wickham we're heading down to a road called Addington Road and then we'll be going across um, I think it's the A232 in a, in a few minutes um, but once we get on Gates Green Road that's the first section of greenery um, and lanes that I like going on it's a road that I use to go to many many routes around here um, and it's just a nice way to get out because the lanes are so nice um, here we are coming up to the junction of Addington Road um, not a particularly dangerous road to cross this one but it is busy you can go right and left down here as well which will bring you out to the same place um, the junction opposite Gates Green Lane um, but sometimes I prefer to go across this way because the roads are less busy um, now this route takes us towards Biggin Hill Aerodrome uh, which I love one of my favorite places lots of interesting things going on there from day to day um, I'm just stopping here to just check the camera mount actually, I'm just moving off again. But yeah, Biggin Hill's a, a great place to go, um, used to have some great air shows up there, it seems to have stopped that over the last few years, um, well certainly since before the pandemic anyway, they've got very, very um, much smaller shows going on there nowadays, uh, but I still like to go up there. There's Spitfires and Hurricanes that run from um, the aerodrome itself. Um, and it, it's just a really nice place to go actually it's got the, the museum, the memorial um, it's as I say it's it's got a lot of history there for the RAF anyway just speeded up that road um, we're just crossing over now to um, Glebe, this is Glebe by the A232 um, you've got quite a steep climb that goes up to the left here I wouldn't recommend cycling because of the amount of traffic that goes up there and it's very very narrow um, so cars can't get past you it's got double white lines in the center it's just not a very nice place to be actually it's not bad coming down it because you can more than keep up with the cars coming down it but going up it you'll get trucks and lorries and things um, sitting behind you anyway here we are gates green lane this is the first bit of greenery that i normally get into um, it's got a lovely park on the left hand side if you take your dogs for a walk and things there yeah, it's quite nice um, and they've got a historical uh, stone age or bronze age fort at the very very top of there which i think is where coney hall which is this neck of the woods gets its name from um, it's got something to do with the original names for rabbits here and things rabbits and hares um, that were brought over by i think rabbits were brought over by the romans well one the other anyway but anyway here we go heading down towards gates green lane now this particular road i love um, because it's not particularly busy um, it's got some great sights a little bit further down and for me it's 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 ideal for filming actually it's got got lots of good runs um, where you can see for quite a distance but as you say you can see it yourself here on camera this is the new camera mount which is mounted on the handlebars uh, which has been a massive help actually um, I can't believe how good it is it's taken me about a day and a half to get various iterations of it right so I've got smooth footage from it um, now I am taking my camera with me to take a few um, shots which I've managed to get um, as some of you may know I'm, I'm quite into my photography um, and also cameras just generally uh, but I like both video and um, still photography um, it's really a bit more of a hobby for me well actually it's more than a hobby for me actually um, I, I used to make a, a living with it with product photos and things so for me this is quite quite therapeutic anyway we're going down Gates Green Lane now. This is the residential area um, where you can see the trees a little bit further down. We then go back out into greenery again. It's, as I say, it's a really nice area to live in. Um, it's really nice if you enjoy cycling. The lanes are out here. We're probably about 20 minutes ride here from Crystal Palace or so. 
uh, depending on which end or Elmer's end. Um, so it doesn't take very long to get out here, and once you are, there's some absolutely fabulous roads. Um, now, as we head into this greenery here, um, there's fields on the right-hand side, um, and some of them go over to where uh, Lamb's Farm is. Um, you can actually walk through them for dog walks and things, and there's no problem parking up on the left-hand side or, or, or either side further down, but most people just park on the left here. Um, so if it's a place you want to go, even for a walk somewhere, um, you can you can take a, uh, um, a stop further down here and disappear off into the wilderness. There's lots of good walks around here. And if you take your mountain bike, some of the roads or some of the trails down here are what they class as permissive bridle weights, so you can actually ride your mountain bike down here. Um, it does get a, a bit overgrown, to be honest with you, during the summer. Over the last few months, more than anything else, I've noticed um, some of the trails that I go down have become so overgrown with uh, berries and stinging nettles. You, you have to be a little bit careful there or you could end up quite sore and covered in 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 cuts and things um so just be a little bit aware of that quite literally if i if i turn down any trails now and it looks a bit heavy going to start with the chances are it's going to be a lot worse further down so at the moment i've been um taking a lot of the the tight trails or the um what i would class as walkways for people <laughs> Um, I've been giving them a miss because they have become quite overgrown now. Um, come winter time, hopefully they'll have um, subsided a little bit and I'll be able to get down them. Or perhaps if the um, local rangers and things get up and down them with their vehicles, it'll push some of the greenery back a little bit so you can get down there on a bike a bit easier without being torn to pieces. But yeah, where we're coming up to now um, is the junction of uh, Nash Road. Um, basically, if you go towards the right-hand side here, it'll take you up to a place called Nash Lane, uh, which then joins on, joins on with Lamb's Farm Road. It's a road I use on one of my other rides, uh, which is quite good. It takes you over to Bettlestead Lane, which I've also, also documented here. Um, right, so straight on past Nash Lane then. We're not turning right today. Um, as you can see, the yeah, the, the roads and things are, are not very busy around here. They're a little bit potholy, but they're certainly not the worst roads around here, actually. Um, they're pretty good for cycling, even if you've got 23 or 25 tyres. Um, these roads are manageable, so I wouldn't be put off with that. Um, with my particular bike, I can disappear off. There's some trails and things off to the left and right here. Uh, which will take you again towards um, Lamb's Farm Road in that direction. If you go left up this hill actually, that's quite a good hill. Um, it's a bit of a climb, but it's not too bad. Um, and that will take you back to the main road. I think it's the A232 that will go up there. So it will join on here, but this road's more fun. Um, the other road's quite busy, this road's more fun. But if you take that, um, the, the previous road there, it will also take you up to a couple of pubs. So if this is part of a long ride for you, um, there's a couple of pubs at the top of the road. Uh, one of which is called, I think, the Fox and the Hill. Um, which does food and other bits and pieces as well, so that will be quite a nice stop for people. Um, I'm not a massive fan, I must say, of stopping off on rides. I, I like to get the rides done. Um, if I do have to bring something with me, um, I'll bring some energy bars or flapjacks or whatever, and I'll, generally speaking, have them on the, the route. Um, I, I just can't do the bit where I have a, something like uh, an egg breakfast or so halfway round it and I just don't feel like getting on the bike again after I've had something like that. It just doesn't work. I, I have had a couple of rides before where I've stopped off at pubs and had a beer, had something to eat and oh my god it was so awful. Uh, just getting back on the bike again. You sort of, it's alright after about 30 or 40 minutes later but the first 30 or 40 minutes are not a happy space, to be honest with you. Not for me, anyway. Uh, but other people can do it, and other people have light lunches, which I suppose is probably the better way to do it, or a lighter breakfast. Um, I don't tend to eat a great deal before I come out on the bike, but hey, what can you do? Anyway, just up here, 
Um, this is one of the lanes that I used to go through on the left hand side just where the bike's pointing here is a trail that disappears up which um, horses use. Um, it's not a bad trail actually, it's not not particularly challenging one way or the other but it's it's become rather overgrown with stinging nettles and um, raspberries and whatever berries they are with the thorns in them. This is one of the pictures of the lane looking back down it that I took. Um, this one's used with a filter actually uh, which brings out the colours and the contrast a little bit better which I quite like. Um, it's a really nice place to be that particular lane actually I do like coming up there and this is literally just turned right from where we were, just were and carried on up the hill. Um, can get a little bit steep um, it's not unmanageable I mean you can always stop halfway up and carry on again um, that usually makes me feel a bit better if I do that but generally speaking I don't stop on these climbs I just carry on going there but for the photographs I did and nowadays since I'm carrying a tripod around with me and camera gear and spare batteries and other bits and pieces on there I'm seriously thinking about getting a rack and some panniers for it actually I do enjoy um, the challenge of cycling with camera gear and just taking stuff that you need with you um, and as a result of that the saddlebag on the back of the bike has got quite large with um, cable ties and uh, a multi-tool and patches and all the other bits and pieces that you tend to take out with you I even carry a spoke spanner there as well because um, I've had one wheel which one spoke worked loose on and um, gave me a bit of a headache actually because um, I didn't have a spoke spanner at the time so I had to let it go loose enough so I could tighten it by hand just to get home but after two or three stops to tighten it I managed to get home so it wasn't the end of the world and when I got home I, I put some um, Loctite on it and tightened it and, and made sure the wheel was true basically before I went back out on it not had issues with it since it was just one of those one-offs but to have the spoke spanner means that you you can sort that out literally in one go on the ride um, as you can see here I'm coming up to the top of this part really um, this is the high point it goes higher again a bit further around but off to the right and left are some quite well to the left there's some quite nice large houses uh, to the right there's some pretty damn uh, good fields um, sometimes in the mornings when I'm coming over this route I can actually see the Spitfire flying from Biggin Hill that takes people out um, and you can hear it long before you see it um, and it's quite a nice sight to see. Um, there's also a hurricane which comes up from time to time as well, uh, which I like because they tend to be a sort of forgotten aircraft from the Battle of Britain, and this is very much a historical Battle of Britain area. Um, so it's nice to see the hurricane up, although you don't see as many of those. They, they don't seem to be quite as fashionable on the, the warbirds scene as the um, Spitfires are. Uh, but it's still a great plane to see and it still makes a gorgeous noise obviously with the Merlin engine. Anyway, as I come up a little bit further along here, um, I, that's the problem with having the, the, the camera mounted in the bars now. I'd normally look across the field over the hedges and be able to show you um, the, uh, the gorgeous fields off to the right basically because you've got some trails and things that run across on the horizon, well the horizon of the field anyway. Uh, which show you and this is here where I'm coming to my second stop here with the camera I wanted to you can see straight through the gap there um, unfortunately this is an area where people do a lot of fly tipping but the pathway beyond uh, which is this, this photograph here that will take you again across towards Lames Farm Road um, and uh, Nash Lane as well I believe you can join on to this as well um, but in the field just beyond it there which you could see through the gap they've got these they look like apple trees to me um but they're at the bottom of the field i wish i had a wider angle lens for this particular camera um because i could show you the sort of it's literally in the hollow of a valley um so you'd be able to get a good look at that basically on the right hand side here where we're going off um that's where it is but right now we're going slightly downhill now and at the bottom of this lane we're going to go right but if you carry on straight up here it will take you towards a place called Keston Church now this particular route if you follow this road all the way down um, it gets quite steep 
<laughs> to be honest. Um, if you go straight up this way, uh, it starts to climb up towards the church car park, which is probably, it's over 20% anyway, I'd say it's probably near 25 at the top. Um, it's quite a steep hill. You can get up it. I mean, I, I ride up it quite frequently, um, but just be warned it is a bit steep. Here we go, sped it up here. Uh, much as I like this lane, I wanted to keep the video as short as possible because um, it's an hour, it's just over an hour ride. Beware of people standing in the road chatting. Um, there's a lot of that around here. It's quite a laid back area actually, which is fine. There's not many cars that come here. Again, still proceeding, we're still going uphill. Um, you have to be a little bit careful of SUVs coming down here, but most people drive sensibly, so it's not too much of an issue. But there is only parking, there is only passing spaces here for one bike and one car. You won't get two cars down here without stopping in somewhere to let the other one pass. So just be aware of that. And occasionally you get some people come down here a bit fast, but it's usually only for the first few meters once they work out it's quite a narrow road they drop their speed quite quickly uh, but just be a little bit aware of that the top here but yeah now we're coming up to the this is called main road biggin hill um in a sec we'll be coming across it and quite literally where we come out at the top here um, if you could go straight across the houses at the back, you'd be into the fields where the where the um, the runway is. Uh, Biggin Hill's quite a large airport. The runway is quite long, um, so it stretches back quite a, quite a good deal. But here you go, where you can see these cars going across here. If you could go straight across as the uh, literally follow the follow the straight line, um, you'd be on the uh, airport apron runway. Um, be a bit careful if you're turning right out here. This is a very busy road. Um, no matter what time of day it is, there's always cars going up and down here. Sometimes it's quite difficult to do a right out of there. Uh, but a little bit of patience and perseverance does pay off. Right, now this particular bit here um, can be a little bit slow. It's, it's a bit of undulating. It's mostly uphill. I'm going to put it on fast forward so we can travel a little bit faster because nobody wants to go at my pace to be honest with you, even me. Um, but yeah, as we come at the top, some nice houses off to the left hand side and again if you could go left here and across the fields you'd be into where the runways are. Um, there are some nice fields further down actually and towards the left. Um, but you literally have to carry your bike over uh, fences and things to get there and and the ground's not particularly brilliant unless you're on a mountain bike anyway so I wouldn't suggest it if you've got a, a road bike or a, um, yeah a sort of like a commuter bike or so um, but again if you can lift it and you found don't don't mind walking too much it's sometimes quite nice to see it if they've got any interesting planes coming there you can see them they will literally fly over your head as they're coming in uh, or oh, sorry, as so they're taking off. Um, temporary traffic lights. This is rare, actually, down here. There's n there's not never too much roadworks going down here. It's really really rare, but I can get through them. I just weave through the cones and things to stop slowing the traffic down if they're there. Um, it's not a problem. They're not digging up that particular part of the road, so that's it. I, I hate having traffic sitting on my back wheel when I'm coming up here. Um, but yeah. Right, so we're heading up towards, uh, I think it's the first entrance to uh, the airfield actually. You can't, oh, you, well you probably can get in it if you try to walk through it. It's called Milking Lane, it's on the left hand side here. Um, and you can see planes, if you walk down to the end of it here, you can see planes taking off from this way. Um, you're not too far from the passenger terminal for Biggin Hill Airport here. Um, so people with private jet charters and things will come in um, to the uh, terminal, which is just a little bit further on from here. Um, and this is where the planes taxi to pick them up from, to take them off to their um, Spanish islands or whatever, wherever they're going from here actually, or other parts of Europe as well. Um, it's a nice old place actually. This road, although it, it does seem quite busy, is not too bad to cycle on. Um, once you've got up the hill, um, the road tends to be a little bit wider, so there's more than enough space for cars and bikes on either side um, to carry on without too much of a, of a conflict. Um, as we get round this corner a little bit here, this is where the terminal entrance is. 
again not particularly busy traffic wise so you don't have to worry about it um, I'm not sure during wartime whether this was the entrance to the place actually you can imagine if this was uh, 19, 1939 1940 England this would have been a bit more of a farm track rather than a major road and supplies and things to the airfields were taken up by um, trucks and probably horse carts as well for local food produce and things as well um, but everything came up this road and this road was um, a little bit further down from the airport in the woods there's pillboxes and things which they were um, using as or were going to use as defense if the Germans did invade um, in the 1940s um, so they had pillboxes overlooking the hills um, and good coverage basically because the airfields generally speaking although they had anti-aircraft fire they also had um, anti-infantry um, protections as well that were put in place um, and if you can go down a little bit further past the airport you can see some of the um, brick emplacements that were built basically as pillboxes and defences here um, off to the left here we're just about to pull into where the aerodrome is um, this is where the memorial and the um, uh, church and the gate guardians are um, as you can see here the entrance comes up it's well worth a stop in actually if you're if you cycle out I, I stop in here um, quite often on rides um, sometimes just to just to see the gate guardians and see what's going on around here but uh, it's a nice place to be um, you've got a, a hurricane which is the first aircraft here that we're coming up on and just beyond it is a Spitfire and uh, Spitfire was um, designed by a chap called uh, Reginald um, and the hurricane was designed by a chap he called Sydney Cam now the the Spitfire was an all-metal construction it was a very modern plane but the Spitfires weren't as easy to fix and keep serviceable as the Hurricanes the Hurricanes were designed very much along the lines of original uh, plane building so it's it's aluminium at the front and a lot of it is dope canvas going backwards from the cockpit backwards basically so it was a lot easier to repair and keep serviceable um, wasn't quite as fast as the Spitfire uh, but it was still quite an agile plane oh look who's that on there that's me actually I got my press gang some stranger into it, taking a photograph of me um, which is rather nice of him but again once we're done we've taken our photos and things and we're just heading back out into the, the main road again um, as I say well worth a visit um, if you're going past for a couple of minutes just to have a look at the thing um, and thank you lucky stars that people were around who were brave enough basically to fly these aircraft against huge numbers um, of opposition um, and to go up several times a day as well I don't know how they did that personally um, here we go we're going off into the road um, loads of cyclists around here as I said before it's a it's a it's a nice place to go if you've got a bike it's a nice place to go it's a bit hilly but if you do the rides frequently you get used to it quite quickly actually um, and you can manage it around there once you've been up them a couple of times there's no longer a surprise as to how hard it is you just get more and more used to it and then you find yourself managing it I wouldn't say easily actually I still don't manage some of the places easily up here but I don't fear them anymore I can get up so it's not a worry um, right now a little bit past here you can see on the left hand side there's hangars um, for aircraft um, Bernie Eccleston who used to run Formula 1 used to keep one of his aircraft or two of his aircraft on the left hand side here actually uh, and he used to do service work for them and things on the airport but a little bit further on from the airport here um, oh that was it yeah um, just as I'm riding past here a little bit further down the road there's some people you get photographers up here and plane spotters so they wait for special aircraft that are coming in um, from all different parts of the world actually they, they fly in here sometimes some of them are military they stop and fill up but a little bit further on here um, you'll see you'll see people with cameras or binoculars spotting and things and off to the right here you can see a helicopter 
Now I remembered from previous times being at air bases and things um, not to go under helicopters, especially on a bike, basically when they're coming in to land. Um, important point to remember, but they, if there's, if that's several tons of helicopter flying above you, the wash from the rotors is also several tons of air pressure coming down. Um, so you might get blown about, although you can't see it, and especially in a place like this where there's no paper or, or grass cutting, so you can't see the direction it's going in, you can get literally um, push flat, basically if the helicopter's coming in low enough. So I backed off on the brakes a little bit there and let that one go, go over. Um, but here we are, we're going past it. It's being used as a COVID testing centre, or it has been over the last few months. Um, but here we go on the left hand side here that's where formula one management is um and they fly in actual fact this was on the sunday of the grand prix the belgian grand prix that was actually um run for two laps or so so the car park was pretty full so they must have had quite a few people in there to cover absolutely nothing um not that i'm disgruntled about it actually it was quite dangerous actually i'm quite glad they didn't do it i, I don't want somebody getting hurt basically for my entertainment no, that wouldn't please me and we're heading down here towards um well basically it rises it goes downhill a bit then goes uphill but as we come up to this bit here we come out to a place called um uh jail lane now, Jail Lane's famous for having a pub on it called the Old Jail Inn. And I've done a bit of research on this here as we turn left. Um, apparently nobody knows whether it was actually used as a jail or not, which is a bit of a shocker, to be honest. I always assumed it was, but there's rumours apparently that prisoners were taken from London along this route, basically on the way to Maidstone Jail, and they'd stop off here. Um and maybe kept over here overnight but nobody knows that for sure to be honest with you it's just as likely it could be some rustic basically who owned it who liked catching locals and putting them in jail for their own jollies who knows um but the pub's quite nice there and it does some good food i've been in there um actually the last time was quite a few years ago actually um but they used to do good food and now they've opened back up hopefully it'll be a bit better um be a bit careful down this lane you get well this is unusual, but I mean, the guy just overtook me and then stopped to pick up somebody, parked his BMW in the middle of the road. Um, but hey ho, what could he do? Anyway, travelling a little bit further down, I think they were part of a party that was looking for the old jail in, strangely enough, because um, we encounter another car sharp on its brakes a little bit later on, um, who was part of the same group, I believe. Um, but yeah, you've got to be a bit sensible down here, but this is a fast part that I quite like doing. Um, go downhill a bit, here we go, and keeping my distance still because I'm a bit suspicious, um, but yeah, brakes on, missed the car park entrance, and just stopped there. did apologise, which is quite nice, but yeah, I just lost all my momentum there, but hey, what can you do? Um, on the left-hand side, a little bit further up here, as we turn the bend... There's a place that does archery. You can see it through the woods on the left-hand side. It just as you start going around the corner, and it's something I've always fancied doing. Actually, I have tried it on holiday and various other bits and pieces. So, I will be stopping in there one day and asking about what's involved in that. Hopefully, one day. Um, but here we go. We're heading along. Uh, I can't remember what the name of this road is actually. Um, but it leads down to down. It goes past Charles Darwin House. I'll think about it in a second. Um, but it's a nice lane again. Not too busy. Um, cars do use it, but it's, it's never super busy and there's more than enough space to get past. And to be honest with you, most people are quite courteous down here if you're on a bike. They're, they're well used to them, so they tend to be a bit patient there. I, I tend to if I see a place around the corner where they can get past, there's Charles Darwin House on the left-hand side there, I will then wave them past and move over, basically to help them get on their way if they've been patient with me. I'm more than happy to do that. Now, we're coming into a, a little... Well, I assume it's called a village, actually. It's called... Um, I think it's down this one. It's near Christmas Tree Farm. Um, and it's really nice. There's got a, They've got a couple of pubs here. And not that we've had much of a summer so far this year, but um, as you stop in there, there's there used to be people out with um, 
having a drink and things out there but since the pandemic that seems to have curtailed a lot of that right so here we are we're going down the main road that now runs back to the a232 um, we've got Keston on the right and left here this is fish ponds road on the right that we're coming down to in a second um, there it is on the right um, and this is the fox and hounds it's that other hill that, um, hill that I was telling you about with the pubs on it now this is one of the places that I like coming down um, on the bike that I've got at the moment I can disappear off into the trails off here uh, it's got drop bars on it but it's got very very large tires so um, it does these a lot better than well basically it's a mountain bike frame for one of a better word with mountain bike wheels and it's so uh, it manages these these bits very very easily um, and as I come down here we've got um, various trails that we can disappear down and you've got to be a bit careful here I'm not sure whether this is um, you got to watch out for people coming. I don't cycle fast through these bits. Not not since the pandemic. There's just too many people there. Um, but you just take it easy. I generally speaking go at a walking pace if I'm going through these bits and pieces. There's some places further up which are well away from cars and houses, which you, you hardly any, ever see anyone in. Uh, but yeah, just let them know that you're there, and they'll normally just let you go past and. No problem, I say hello to just about everyone there. I think I said hello about, about, about four times there. Um, but I quite like the interaction with people. But there's some nice bits down here. Lots of greenery, as I say. Lots of trails that you can disappear down on. It's quite nice on a mountain bike. Um, you can do these kind of things on a road bike, although it's a bit tree rooty. So I probably wouldn't recommend it if it's being wet. Um, because you'll find that your racing tyres with the high pressures will tend to skip and slide off tree roots at the wrong angle here uh, which will put you down face first uh, which is no fun no fun that is anyway as we head through the uh, the gaps here I'm heading towards a place called uh, Prentice Road essentially um, which is a gap in the a gap in the trees which I I like doing photography in, um, especially in the autumn. Uh, it's a really nice place to go when the light's starting to drop low between the trees. Um, and where we go through here, which I like highlighting here, as I say, uh, it's quite beautiful. If you like woodlands, it's quite beautiful. You do bump into people here. A lot of um, ramblers use this, actually. They come up from Hayes and carry on towards where we've just come from. Uh, but that's the kind of scenery that you get. Um, I, I love it. I love going through the woods. I know quite a lot of the trails through here. Um, and it's just such a peaceful place to be. You know, if you, if you like your own well-being and, and if commuting, communing with nature makes you feel better, which it does for me, then this is one of the reasons why I like getting out on the bike. It's not to go fast it's to get to places like this and have special moments basically where you're out on your own or with maybe one or two people that you enjoy spending time with um, this is for my own <laughs> mental well-being uh, I absolutely love it this this is this is what I enjoy doing and it's quite good over here because even if it's particularly heavy rain there's enough canopy over here to keep you mostly dry um, and it takes a couple of weeks of steady rain before it becomes really really um, uh, soft ground here so it, 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 it's a good place to cut through if it starts to get heavy with the weather I've actually been out for a ride here before where it's actually been snowing um, well when I say snowing we're not talking about Canada here we're talking about a couple of flakes here and there but um, it's quite nice to come through Right, now where we come out here is the top of Station Road in Hayes, um, where the, the house is there that you can see I'm heading for. Here is the gap where the road is. Um, again, nice place to come. Um, I've stopped many a time at the top of this to finish off my drink and have a quick bite to eat um, with what's left of whatever I've taken out to eat with. Um, and it's a really nice place to be in the summertime when the schools and things here you'll get quite a lot of kids cutting through the, the, the park and things to get to places or to bunk off probably um, 
but yeah this this is this is uh, the last part of my journey really you head down this quite steep hill uh, which is called station road um and it will take you down to where hayes um train station is um so do be if you've got any if you've got a bike with dubious brakes this is probably not ideal for you um but as you come down here just a quick flick, flick over your shoulder on the right hand side make sure nothing's coming you've got good visibility there and this takes you down um to well basically the new inn ember inn i think it's called over on the right hand side and straight ahead here actually is you've got the craft beer rooms which is uh, a friend of mine's bar literally straight ahead at the roundabout here um, just there and that's where she's got a bar which is quite a nice place to do and they do quiz nights on tuesday which is great uh haven't won one yet but you know live in hope <laughs> but my dude have to have some sort of knowledge basically to live in hope but hey I, i'm i'm enthusiastic about things like that so what can i say um this is hayes high street uh it's a nice high street actually There's quite a few cafes and bars along it as well um but you just got to watch out for SUVs and people people looking for parking spaces down here especially if it's busy on a Saturday and things um, yeah, yeah people will do u-turns and all sorts of things around there they don't seem to look out there look over their right shoulder um, but that's just my personal experience right we're coming back along the main road here which is called uh, I think it's Pickhurst Lane this one uh, got a nice pub a little bit further up um, which I've been to a few times if you like um, uh, steaks and what have you it's quite nice um, but as we head up towards the hill here um, this is essentially uh, where I where I, li I live just li a little bit further up the road so that's the journey we're now heading back into uh, West Wickham's on your left hand side if you carry on further up this road this will take you also into Bromley as well it's a little bit of a climb but it's, it's completely manageable it's not too bad um, it is a bit of hard work sometimes come when I come back this way after I've done 60 kilometers but um, it's still manageable what, what can I say you know I'm just I just <laughs> I just get negatively affected by hills mentally to be honest but a lot of people do that and I know I can get up them as well I don't know why I worry about them but anyway that's the video for today I hope you enjoyed the ride and I hope you give it a go um, there'll be more coming out I'm going to do some more of my rides I'm just hoping the weather gets a bit more summery to be honest with you um, as it stands now we're coming up to September and it's not been that brilliant weather wise we've had a few days of good weather but it's not been the 30s like it was last year uh, but there you go it, it, it's still not too bad to be honest. it could be a lot worse anyway thanks for joining me and i hope you have a good trip and enjoy your rides as well if you give this one a go drop me some comments please like and subscribe um that will help me out quite a bit and uh, I'll be doing more videos. Thank you very much. Bye.